Now we're gonna to move to the apical views. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, I've been doing this a long time, so it's easy for me to find these views, but it'll drive you crazy here for a little bit to try and find them. So what I typically do is, is if you're having a hard time finding your pair or your apical four chamber, once you're in the parasternal view, if you go all the way down the chest, you will fall into the apex, the apical four. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So here's your, your parasternal lung. And if you just slide down the chest and you keep the ventricles in view, you're gonna eventually slide into the apical four, which is right here. So apical four chamber, you're gonna look right here at the side of the chest. So the notch is gonna be facing down towards the bed. And you're going to have to flip the image because you want this to look anatomically correct. So here, notch is down towards the bed. I have already, this is the adult view of things. Now, oftentimes you might have kids that are in between transducers, meaning you might, she's tall, she's taller than the average eight year old. So you might need a taller or a bigger, uh, lower frequency transducer. So we're gonna try that because I don't like how the S9 is looking. Okay, bring your arm up. Okay, yes, this is much better. Okay, so you have the ventricles here. This is the adult view of the four chamber. So you're gonna have to hit the up down button to make it anatomically correct. So the notch is down towards the bed. And in this view, you have your two atria here at the top, two atria at the, or the ventricles at the bottom. You've got your mitral valve, tricuspid valve, which is more apically displaced. So you know that's your right ventricle and the tricuspid valve. So here we want to get a good 2D view of the four chambers. So you would take this image and then you wanna put color over the mitral valve. Then continuous wave. And then pulse wave at the leaflet tips. So this is really important. So on the ventricular side of the mitral valve, see how the leaflet tips are opening there towards the ventricle? You wanna place this little circle here and then when you hit pulse wave, that's where your range gate will be. You might have to move the baseline down. You might have to fuss a little because you wanna see the E and the A wave. So you might have to move up a little bit and there they are. So here's the E wave of the mitral valve, A wave, corresponding in diastole. So once you get the E and the A wave, you can measure that. You've got left inflow, EA, so mitral valve peak E velocity, and you can do the A velocity down here. Corresponds with your A kick, that's the atrial kick here with the P wave, take that measurement. And then you can also do uh, tissue Doppler, which is the TDI-PW button. We'll show that, you'll see that on the, the panel screen. And here you would measure under TDI, you would measure medial E prime velocity, right here where the E wave would be on your pulse wave. So it's tissue Doppler, on the panel and it automatically comes up with range gate for pulse wave. So you put it on the septal part, the medial part of the ventricular septum, right under the annulus. That's where you wanna measure. And then over here, you do it on the, the lateral side, right under the annulus. And I know this comes in and out of view and you have to adjust sometimes because it's hard to know where that heart's gonna land. So there you go. So here is the lateral E prime velocity. This is for diastology. You don't have to do this in every patient, but if the doctor asks you for it, that's how you do it. Okay, now we're gonna look at pulmonary veins. This is one of the views. With older kids, it's gonna be challenging to get all four pulmonary veins. We'll try an Eleanor, but here you can see at least one pulmonary vein here and another here. So we take a color view of that and then we pulse wave on the entrance of one of the pulmonary veins. And then we do the other if we can. 
This is to help exclude total anomalous pulmonary venous return, at least you see two, so you know it's not total. You can always have a partial, but not a total when you can see a couple veins draining to the left atrium. Here you want a nice view of the left ventricle. You can take a, a, a clip of this and then you would do an ejection fraction. The ejection fraction helps tell how well the left ventricle function is doing. Uh, there's different rules of thumb with the, uh, the range, but here we use about 60%. So you would use the A4 CD, so apical four chamber diastole. You would take your calipers and go annulus to annulus and bring this other caliper down to the apex of the heart. Once you hit the left kidney bean and anchor that, you can use this finger and the further out you go and hover over these dots, the fewer that are uh, highlighted. So you can only move one dot at a time if that one's highlighted, but if you go more towards the center, more are highlighted so you can bring your whole wall out. So here's a good tracing in diastole. We would acquire that and then use your trackball to move forward into systole. Hit the A4CS button Again, calipers at either annulus. You use the kidney bean to do that. You drag down the caliper. And again, we would need to pull these out a little bit to do the inter interceptum. Now, I didn't do a very good job because this is 46% and her function's better than that. But it can be very difficult sometimes to get a really good um, four chamber to do an accurate EA. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the aorta. So if you rock the tail of the transducer down towards the legs and the footprint up towards the head, you automatically get the aorta here coming out of the left ventricle. You take a 2D view of that, a clip of that, and then you cover it with color. And you're watching for any regurgitation to come into the left ventricle from that aortic valve. Also, you're looking for any stenosis or any um, subvalvular uh, issues. So you take a color view you would do continuous wave. And then once you have that waveform, you would hit left outflow and you do ascending aorta max pressure gradient. Take that picture. You would do pulse wave below the valve into the left ventricle. So just below the leaflets here. And then you would use LVOT max pressure gradient. This is the LV side of the valve. So that's the pressure gradient. And then on the other side of the valve, this will be the aorta, the AV max here. All right, and then we go over here to the, the right side. We're looking at the tricuspid valve. I always take a 2D clip of that, then I'll do color. Looking for a tricuspid regurg, then continuous wave. You're acquiring all of these images, and then you will do a pulse wave at the leaflet tips like you did on the mitral valve. You don't have to do any measurements here. And then you move your cursor over to the annulus of the right ventricle and you turn on M mode. And this is for what's called TAPSI, which is the uh, plane excursion of the tricuspid valve annulus. And this is going to assess right ventricular function. This is the picture you wanna take. In TAPSI, there's a TAPSI button on the touch screen that autom automatically shows up. Then you go from the bottom of the trough to the top of the trough. And there are normal values, about seven, 16 or 17 is normal, 1.8 or 1.6 uh, in that range. So now you have all of the four chamber assessed in the five chamber, which is the aortic valve outflow. Now let's say you had a really tough time getting your RVOT views from the peristernal wall. You can tip up towards the aorta, and if you keep rocking the tail down and tipping the footprint up towards the head, you can get the pulmonic valve in this view as well. Here is RV, pulmonic valve, and pulmonary artery. This is not the most ideal view to assess the valve, but in a pinch, if you need to get gradients, this is a good place to look. Now, two chamber. This is gonna be your uh, arch enemy for a little while. It's tough to get because you need to take the tail of the transducer and rotate it counterclockwise, and also sometimes tip in to get the, the on-plane view of the two, two chamber part. So here we'll, we'll try and do it. So here is a good four chamber view and I'm gonna turn my transducer and there's the two chamber. And I have to kind of wiggle in and be, 
that intercostal space to get the anterior wall in a little bit. And there we have it. So left atrium, mitral valve, inferior wall, interior. Uh, good nomenclature that I used is CIA, <laughs> like the agency. So it helps me remember that inferior, then anterior wall comes in, just a, something to remember. Here you wanna take this view and you can also measure ejection fractions. So we go into the diastolic, diastolic frame and the largest, um, the frame that you have there, the largest uh, chamber size, and you want the valves to be closed. Then you hit A2C, lower D, that's the apical two chamber in diastole. There you go. And then we will take the track ball and move forward into systole. Now it's the A2C small s, apical two chamber in systole. And you get really fast with this after a while. So you can come back up here and hover and hover over this square and you can bring the whole wall in, which I do often. Okay, now that we got our two chamber view, if you continue to move counterclockwise, you will get the three chamber view. The three chamber view is the left ventricle, uh, ascending aorta, the aorta, uh, aortic valve, and the mitral valve here in the left atrium. So again, you just go from the notch being down at the table for the four chamber, rotating slightly counterclockwise for the two chamber. And you might have to tip in or out to get on plane. And then you, again, rotate counterclockwise. Now the notch is almost up towards her head. Here's the notch. So you went from down to the table up to the head and now you have the three chamber view. And you wanna put color over the mitral valve and aorta showing regurgitation or stenosis. And this is also a really good view if you have a hard time getting aortic stenosis gradients to Doppler there.